all my favorite players were like super skilled players. Like I played nothing uh, like them. Uh, Kobe was like my. So I grew up with my grandparents. <laughs> If you've been in the hobby for more than a day, then you know how fast the sports card market moves. There are no more options than ever to buy, sell, and research your cards. One of the most frustrating hurdles in the hobby is the fees when selling your cards. You know, those other popular marketplaces, the ones with their average seller transaction fee of 10%, the ones that don't have the seller's interest in mind. Wait, what? Who would do that? Well, hold on to your horses. No, not those horses. Welcome to The Card Flip, a place where we want to provide a simple alternative to buying and selling cards. No clutter, just you, graded cards, sealed wax, and the easiest of transactions. So what do you say? Are you in? Great! Welcome to The Card Flip, the seller's marketplace. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Mint Condition. I am Joe, a.k.a. Bunch You Bets, and this is the only show on the internet where you can get watch me get fatter week by week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, are, we are excited to, every time I come on, I get a little fatter, and you're, you're seeing the evolution week by week. So uh, we are excited today to have an awesome guest with us, but first uh, we got our other amazing co-hosts, Chamber and Dez. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? But I was about to say how svelte you looked. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, okay. <laughs> because I shaved off. Wilson, you may not know this about me, but I'm currently unemployed, and I'm trying to find a new job. And I had that COVID beard that was getting a little, maybe yeah. not job friendly. So I, I, after months and months of growing this thing, I'm like, I got, I got to shave it down. I shaved down about 10 pounds of beer, but found about 15 pounds of, of face behind it. So did not like that very much. Uh, and the skinniest co-host of us all, Dez. Dez, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. You know, you just watch these in reverse and you get skinnier. So that's, that's, for all that's the viewers, the just watch it in reverse and you'd be all right. Um, no, yeah. I'm doing good. I'm excited. Uh, great guest today. We actually share something he doesn't even know. My middle name is Chandler, so always have had awesome. a connected, connected name yeah. to that, and I appreciate that. I'll tell you what, not many people rocking the name Chandler out there, so I appreciate you what you do for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And, of course, our guest today, Wilson Chandler, former NBA and uh, NBA player and New York Knicks great, I will say. I'm a, a big Knicks fan, so I appreciated watching Wilson over the years. Wilson, thank you for joining us today. Glad to have you. How you doing? I'm good, man. Appreciate you guys for having me on the show. Uh, big fans. Uh, spoke to a couple of you guys and uh, – Twitter uh, chats, you know, a few times. So uh, just happy to be here. Thank you for having me. For sure. So we're just going to uh, we're just going to chat today about what's going on in the NFT space, the Zed Run space. Uh, little Top Shot news. We got a lot going on. But first and foremost, let's talk about your journey into kind of the crypto space, NFTs. How did you, you know, how did you go from being, you know? NBA player to uh, NFT creator? Um, I guess, I mean, for me, it was easy. You know, um, I was in the crypto space around like 2017, 18, kind of nice. Uh, played around with it like everybody else, uh, just being curious about it. Um, you know, had some good times, had some tough times, uh, lost some money, made some money. So uh was always curious about the space and, uh, and to learn more. So, uh, just, you know, engaging with different people and uh, over time uh, and just kind of staying in the like uh, the know all of uh, just, you know, what's going on in the space. You know, I kind of like fell in love with NFTs once I understood what they were, you know, just from, a, you know, it's a familiar place. You know, as a kid, you always have, you know, basketball cards, uh, what Pokemon cards, collectibles in general, like if, if it's toys or if it's uh, comics. So. Uh, that was a familiar uh, way, you know, for me to get into the space. And uh, same thing with the uh, NFTs that I dropped. You know, I used to collect shoes. So, you know, naturally it was a good, you know, uh, partnership, you know. Um, and it was something that was simple and fun. You know, I didn't want it to be too complicated because I'm not, uh, you know, an expert in any space. So just something that I can, you know, get into that was fun, that was familiar, that was um, also a gateway for people who probably don't know what NFTs are, you know, uh, but probably love shoes, you know, or, you know, the the uh, the new game now is, you know, collecting shoes and uh, selling them on the secondary market. 
Oh yeah. So people who just you know familiar with those those spaces it can kind of get into the uh, this um, and kind of understand. So like, kind of like a gateway. It's not it's not too intimidating. It's, it's something simple and fun, you know. Um, and I wanted to do that, and I also wanted to have uh, a physical utility tied to that, you know. Um, I wanted to take those actual sales, from, my percentage for those sales for those shoes to buy actual physical shoes for kids in my community and also have uh, people come in, or whether it's in, in the uh, real time, or well, not real time, in the physical, or whether it's by um, something like this and just talk to the kids in my community to teach them about crypto, NFTs, uh, blockchain as a whole. So that's really awesome i think you uh you made a couple really great points there um one the utility is fantastic right we've seen a lot of um celebrities or or well-off you know people come in and drop nfts that don't really have an impact like that so to to hear that that's kind of uh what you're doing with those proceeds that's really awesome and and that is you know um, attractive for people to get involved with. And uh, the other piece I thought was really interesting, and it's kind of what, you know, gets me about the whole NFT space and collectibles in general is the nostalgia piece, right? Like you mentioned, you know, going back in the days where you used to collect and trade Pokemon and, uh, you know, sneakers and things like that. I think the nostalgia piece is what is so attractive to me about the space it's because it's just so much fun right like uh you know i i got into crypto around the same time as you 2017 and um i believe we're around the same age i think i'm actually a year older than wilson chandler which is kind of weird to think about <laughs> and um the uh but to me it was like you know, I, and I've spent the last couple of years messing around doing things like trading and, uh, you know, things I'm not good at and don't love as much. And I think this is why I like the NFT piece so much. Uh, it's because it's fun. Right. And, and I think you, you hit that right on the head. Um, Chamber, any thoughts there? You said that he was younger than you and I looked up his age and I forget how old I am. <laughs> and I've, I've been watching for so long. I'm like, how is he? How am I five years older than Wilson Chandler? I, <laughs> this is impossible. I am, uh, but I, I look at guys now where, you know, I'm, I'm a big LA guy. Um, like, look at a guy like uh, Taylor Horton Tucker. It's like 20 years old. I've been watching him for like two years. I feel like he's like my age. I'm like, this guy could be my son. Uh, <laughs> it's, cra <laughs> it's crazy. I'm old, I'm old as time, man. I'm old as time. Uh, That's really yeah. funny. <laughs> he's. <laughs> So, uh, Des, you've got Wilson's uh, NFT project on that screen behind you. So uh, tell us what, what we're seeing on the screen there behind you today. Yeah, I tried to get you guys to ape into this. I remember on the drop day, it was like 1 p.m. Pacific time. And I was like, all right, guys, we got five minutes till the Wilson Chandler drop. Yeah, it was so here. fast. <laughs> By the um, time, by the time you told me, by the time you like really told us about it, it was like gone, right? It was that yeah. fast. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Uh, which I didn't understand at first. I thought it was kind of like a normal sneaker drop where you know you drop and you got to be the first ones to get it. It was actually cool, and I think to your benefit and uh, the proceeds benefit um, that you did it like an auction style. So they went on the auction block, and then they, it was pretty quick how, how quickly it ended, but. Um, it was awesome. And I'm sure you got, Wilson, you got plans to drop some more releases from this kind of series? Yeah, I'm gonna do, uh, I think we did 40 uh, something pairs that drop. And um, so we have another uh, 60 or more to drop, so. Now they look, the design is the, the voxel-like uh, yeah. design on those. Now, the first thing I was thinking about is, can I put these on my character in the sandbox in the metaverse? You know, <laughs> what, like, what, can they be on my avatar? Is that something? Do you know, Wilson, if that's possible? Um, no, not not on a sandbox. It's another one. I think it's possible. I don't know if it's possible to have them on the avatar, but it's possible to have them in that uh, that metaverse. Um, really? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think. Uh, another one crypto uh vox or something like that yeah, yeah. there's crypto yeah. voxels yeah that, that might be it yeah boxes uh that's a that's a, a site that you're able to use those on we'll we'll, we'll build a wilson like, chandler I, shoe store I, on our in our <laughs> on our land that we own uh i kind of wanted to do that i you know when we, we so wilson to catch you up we uh we all on a very like 
lonely Saturday afternoon, decided that we were going to be land barons and bought a whole bunch of land in um, in Sandbox, which yeah. is sim similar to Crypto Voxels, um, kind of like pixelated creation like this. And we bought it. And then oh, that moment of, oh, shit, what do we do with it? <laughs> you know, what do we do with our <laughs> land? And the first thing I, I went to was like something like this, where you can sell these and like a like it would be in a real life shoe store, but then you go play a, a pickup basketball game in the metaverse and you get to rock these, or you trade in your uh, moment, uh, your NBA Top Shot moment, and you get the jersey of whatever moment that was and you can rock that and play it. And so, yeah, I just, I think that's that's a really cool aspect. And I, that's what it attracted me uh, to these so quickly is like, oh yeah, we can actually use these in the metaverse, so. Yeah, that's cool. Those guys did a great job, you know, um creating that company uh crypto kickers you know um and just being kind of like one of the first of that that uh that space you know in the in the metaverse you know um and they were they were super easy to work with you know uh oh. sorry about that got a phone call <laughs> no you're good <laughs> <laughs> and i couldn't uh, charge my computer in time but um yeah, those guys are super easy to work with. Um, we spent a lot of time just going back and forth over the details, you know. Um, it was pretty easy. They had everything already built out, so I just kind of gave my uh, two cents on, like, uh, how we going to sell them, uh, colorways, different designs, stuff like that, all the easy stuff. And they kind of look great. They look great, <laughs> I'll be honest. They did, all, they did all the legwork. You know, they was already a great company before I came around. So, uh it was super easy, you know, and um, I think it's something to be proud of on my end. Like I said, I'm not like a, a, a professional or an expert in this space, you know. Um, I just wanted to create something that looked good, that was fun, that was easy, uh, that people who were like interested in NFTs or who, people who were interested but wasn't necessarily in just kind of like come over just from a sneaker standpoint and just like, oh, what's this? Like you know, kind of dive That's in cool. the gateway. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, so I'm excited to see kind of what what transpires with the uh, next drops and things like that. So Wilson, did in your NFT journey, were you did were you kind of in how all of uh, you know a, a huge amount of people got in via Top Shot, or was your first um, kind of NFT experience with Zed? What uh, you know, what was that? And and like, where do you participate in Top Shot? Are you into it? Why? Why not? Uh, let us know what you think there. Um, my first introduction was Zed's, like from a a participation uh, standpoint. You know, I knew about NFTs and kind of read up on them, knew what they were. Uh, I knew different types of NFTs, um, but Zed was my first. Uh, actual like time like getting in buying one and uh using it you know um and that for me is fun like to be able to have a horse uh not only can you race it you, know, you can breed it you know you can let it sit there whatever like and that's a it's fun but it's an asset you know um for so sure kind of, just kind of building your portfolio in the in that in the z uh space you know um so for me, it's easy. Like I can have fun with it. The interaction with the community is great. You know, um, the founders are great. To, you know, uh, to follow. You know, they leading in a great way. Um, being innovative in the space, and I think it's just like it's super young as a as a company. There's so much they can do, and they expand on like the great things they've done already. So, yeah, that's awesome. So now let's. Uh, Chamber, can we, you actually pull up uh, Wilson's stable? Let's see what let's see what kind of horses we got. Let me see. Here, <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it up here. <laughs> While he's pulling that up, I have a question. So I know you and, and Dinwiddie passed each other when you guys were at, at Brooklyn together. Was he in the locker room talking everyone's ear off about like crypto and and I, I don't know when he started investing in Top Shot, but uh, was he in the locker room just? running his mouth about all this stuff and everyone was like, no, I don't, I don't care about that. Uh, no, I wouldn't say running his mouth, but he definitely was uh, very vocal about it. Um, loving the space and being um, an investor in the space. You know, I think he was uh, very proud of that um, as he should be. Cause he was one of the early, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like one of the earliest ones. And on top of that, he can sit here and have a conversation with anybody in the space you know, and be impressive, you know, uh, not because he's yeah. a basketball but just because he's smart and he knows. So, you know, um, even with me, like I understood the space, but to the depth that he knew it and he understood it, 
not not nearly as much. You know, um, I was always impressed. You know, whenever we talked about the space, he That's was awesome. uh, Ch- Chamber. Do you remember on, on our other show we were reading uh, articles oh, yeah. about Spencer Dinwiddie talking about yeah. like tokenizing player contracts and all that kind of stuff? And, like we're talking that guy's like twenty eighteen. Yeah, yeah that like twenty eighteen. He's talking about that stuff. So uh, I, that's no surprise. So. Uh, Wilson, while he pull, pull, pulls that up, you know, we saw a couple other stories today and yesterday too about more professional athletes um, kind of getting involved in crypto, whether that be getting their salaries paid in crypto, or uh, we saw Trevor Lawrence sign some big deal with uh, with Blockfolio. Um, you know, in your in your experience, kind of around you know professional sports, do you see you know more and more guys that might be coming to uh, starting to do that in the future and what are your thoughts on that yeah definitely i mean it only makes sense from uh uh both sides actually um like marketing is everything you know uh crypto nfts all that all that is hot right now so just even from a, like a, a branding standpoint you know it kind of brings attention to the player but like i said about zed um it's an actual like you know store of value now it's an actual like thing like can't deny it anymore so i can see more and more people getting into the space just from a a finance standpoint and also um on both sides with players and teams for fan engagement for you know um personal branding as well so i can see uh players uh getting more into it and accepting uh cryptos as a um as payment and also getting into the nft space uh whether that's investing in companies or creating your own nfts for your uh for your brand so yeah, we got a uh, what the Mavs are taking uh, Dogecoin now for tickets, and and <laughs> Mark Cuban's got them doing uh, NFT introduction courses. Uh, I, I think I saw that as well. Um, well, we got uh, we got our our boy Sammy bought up a piece of the Miami Stadium, I think, uh, for FTX. Oh, uh, you're 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 Lord and Savior Sam. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> from FTX. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's going to be a bigger and bigger thing. And and there's just I think the sports business as a whole has such a huge opportunity to do things with, you know, NFTs specifically. I think mostly that's because you know what we're going to see the most successful people do and is engage their community, right? And uh, use it to be creative on how they engage their community, how they can take that to the next level. And they already have built-in fan bases, right? So they have the communities that they are struggling to touch now um, that this could potentially give them that, you know, push over the edge. What do you think about that, Des? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I think that's the direction we're going. And it's a, it's a bit of a freight train at this point. So uh, absolutely. All right. So Wilson, walk us through your stable here. You've, uh, I think Des described it earlier as an investor stable. I think that's a good way to describe what we're looking Ooh. at here. So what, what, uh, what are you, what are we looking at here? You've got a, a whole bunch of, of stuff here from, um, is that a Z10 I see all the way up to a, a two? Yeah. Z2? Yeah. Two. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Z10 was actually a gift. Um, was it a gift by you, Chamber? Did you gift Wilson yeah. Chandler the? the- I, I sent him one. Was it this one? I, yeah, was, I forget was, the name of it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Was that the one? This one here? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Make Wait my a second. Day. All right, hold on. Let's go back and tell this story. We're 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 burying the lead here. I I com- I completely forgot you gifted him a horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, our buddy Wilson over here, newfound friend. Yeah. Um, we, during the last Z drop, uh, I don't know exactly what happened. You missed it. Yeah. Uh, did you get pulled over for speeding or something like that? I think <laughs> I heard. Um, I, I, I ended up leaving late from Detroit, going to my hometown. I was always drive. It's like a two and a half hour drop. But I ended yeah. up, I planned it so I can get there for the drop. But I ended up leaving late and then I needed to get gas. So oh. I'm just speed. I'm just going crazy too, <laughs> right? <It's> late. <laughs> yeah, she pulls me over. She said you're an emergency. I'm like, yeah, I got to use the bathroom really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to buy a digital horse. <laughs> you won't understand this, but I really got to get home. Yeah, I was so close to the exit, too. Um, so I ended up getting pulled over. She took forever. To give my ticket, so, oh, uh, oh, that's terrible. I missed so, out, but um, I had a friend also who wanted to split a Z1. So um, I ended up splitting a Z1 with him because he got nice. it. Nice. 
Um, and also, he I had a Z, I had him give me a Z three. So the Z three is in my stable. That's awesome. awesome. So Chamber, you heard this news when you were chatting with Wilson, and you came to the rescue and I, gave him a Z ten Genesis horse. That's huh? right. It was my way of tampering to try to get Wilson to play for the Lakers at some point. So <laughs> you know, so Rob could contact me, and then we could work out a deal where. You know, I could be maybe like an assistant GM at some point down the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> so, okay. So this was I'm a very basically the act. new Magic Johnson of executive. Right. I was going to say the Jonah Hill and Moneyball, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like that way better. <laughs> That's probably closer. That's really funny. So, oh, you've got a Z10 Genesis unraced here. Or or was it raced? I no. haven't won anything <laughs> That one's that was well. a dog. No, that was a you dog. gave him a dog. There you go. But so you uh, got a couple of uh looks like you got a Z, yeah. So Z3 unraced, Z4 unrace, uh another and then two other Z3s, but then you got a Z2 Nakamoto. That seems like a winner here. He's solid. I love him. Yeah, man. this is a nice horse. Yeah, he's definitely... Ooh, is that a 15% win rate? Over yeah, there? 73 races, 11 first place wins. Not bad. Not Class bad. two, huh? Yeah. It's like borderline class two, class one, right? That's 80? 80, yeah. Oh, yeah, so you're right on the cusp. Yeah. So how has it been? Obviously, you've gotten you've gotten your uh, your legs under you. You've raced him 73 times. What you know, what's your favorite part about the um, that part of the experience? I actually um, I don't know how many out of that 73 I have, but I bought him race. Oh, okay. And um he wasn't at 15%. I think he might have been at like 6% at that time. Ah, uh, so you're a pro trainer now. <laughs> <laughs> Call you Bob Baffert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. From a guy, you know, um, that I met through a mutual friend, uh, Drew. Um, oh, so there you go. Shout out, Drew. <laughs> yeah, shout out, Drew. <laughs> got, um, so I ended up getting three or four horses from him and that being one of them. So he was already raced already when I got him. But since I've had him, like, I want to say – Man, he's what doubled. So. Yeah, that's awesome. So, it, it, what is your? You know, I've seen you post about you know your racing. I've seen you race this one against some of like the bigger uh, stables in the game. Yeah. You know, what's your what's your favorite part about the actual racing experience? I think it's the competition. Just seeing you know what's out there. You know, um, engaging them, seeing if you can get your horse to that top tier level. You know. Um, I think it's that for me, um, and just loving just the the game in general, like you know, uh, watching uh, the horses race and just having fun with it. Now, how deep are you going to go into, you know, breeding and all of that kind of stuff once that opens back up? Oh man, I'm going, I'm going here first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think fans, you know, because the you know, whole thing happened, but uh, I'm definitely uh, ten toes in that. So. I, yeah, most of I would say most of us didn't really get a chance. It was open for what a, a day, twenty four hours, a little like a maybe thirty six hours. I and maxed out everyone I could. <laughs> I I did I did hardly anything. I I like lent you the one to kind of stud out for a couple, and it produced a bunch of duds, and that was that was it. We I, so it's been locked up, and since then I've kind of just been chomping at the bit to you know do some tests out there now. Are you going to? I, I didn't even get to see. Uh, I didn't ask. Is the one that you're racing? Is that a colt or is it a female filly? That's a male, I think. Okay, so yeah. are you going to throw them out in this? Are you going to throw them out and have people pay you to stud them, or are you going to kind of try to maybe do it in the house a little with what you have here? What's your What's your strategy going to be? Um, I know I got a couple of friends who have some Z ones, you know, uh, female. So I, that's I think I'm gonna go with that. You know, just something. You know. Um, more sure. Yeah, I, I think that's a, a really good point. I, I think, you know, Des, that kind of goes to um, how much it really is kind of a community game where you bring your friends in that, you know, have what the puzzle pieces that you need, right? And you kind of chat a little strategy, make little deals. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll take a take a second here to pump my own bags and uh, <laughs> pre-promote something I've been working on with with your buddy Drew Wilson. Um, but you know, I think a lot of users want to get involved, and in, and very similar to in real life racing, where you know there's these fractionalized own owned stables, right? 
it's not just a single owner, but it's a group of owners. It's a group of friends and it requires a little, just a little bit of maintenance for them, but they still get the excitement and the thrill of winning a race or having a great horse. And I think that's going to be, you know, so big for how Zed expands is the people who maybe don't have, you know, four hours a day to like do all the analytics and race horses, but still want that feeling of having ownership of something really awesome. So, you know, I, I think that makes total sense. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that's where it's going. I think it's a group game. I think it's a community. And what you're going to see is, yeah, these big stables come together and have a whole bunch of, I mean, that's a great horse. Come at me would be, you know, a feature in a lot of people's like kind of breeding patterns and things like that. So it makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Are we talking fractionalized horse ownership? Is that what we're talking about? Here? Yeah, what we're talking about is Wilson and I will eventually own horses together in a stable. So he doesn't know it yet, but could you tokenize yeah, the NFT? Gonna happen. Yeah, you. Oh, you absolutely could. You could just make oh, yeah. a token that one hundred percent. I I can't believe that light bulb just went off in your head, Jake. <laughs> well, the lights, the electricity doesn't run too hard in here, you know. Uh, so. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like that that's what's going to happen when people own tracks, right? Like you're going to have ownership groups of tracks that'll be pretty much divided by tokens, the community token, right? And you're going to probably buy into a token that represents ownership in a track. And, you know, however much you own is your share of either the governance or the profitability of, of whatever happens. And, um, you know, I, I think that's kind of the future of what you're going to see with when, when they're talking about track ownership and stuff. So I wouldn't I doubt if you see the same thing in horses as well. I actually have a question and I probably not the forum to, to have this discussion, but do either of you guys know if you, if there's a smart contract right now that exists where it pays out, on the ownership of the token so like a dividend but for for shares of the token well so like i know you know if you do uh, this is kind of just a half knowledgeable answer i know like when you do there has to be because like when you do staking rewards right like if, True. if that that automatically pays out based on the amount you're staking right so say you you know you could do it the same way almost totally DeFi, where you have the the pool, right? Uh, you're providing liquidity to the pool so people can come in and out and buy shade ownership. And then as much as you're staking, you would get rewards based on that or whatever, right? Um, you know, groups like there's definitely social tokens out there like the whale token um, that have things like that. Uh, so, you know, I know it's out there. I'm not sure about the smart contract piece, but I feel like it has to exist. Wilson, you know of anything that we that could help Des out? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, Wilson just needs to know that eventually we're going to own a horse, a bunch of horses, and a track together. So that's all he needs to know. <laughs> well, Wilson, do you do you have uh, interest in you know the future when they do open the tracks, uh, like when they do have track ownership and things like that? Is that something that you would be interested in? Yeah, definitely. That'd be dope. You know, um, kind of like you know investing in a team. You know, you got a group that's going to buy you know a professional team. So like, uh, so I think it's similar to that, but just on a very uh smaller scale you know just to have you and your friends invest into a track together and just have people racing on it that'd be dope yeah i think uh and then you know there's a whole business that you could do around it we were talking about you know selling ads to these big races and you know if you've got come at me who is a class one horse and he's going to be going head to head against billions in a race and you know you can promote that and people are going to tune in to watch like all of a sudden now you have potential sponsorship opportunities and and things like that so um i think that's really interesting for the future of the game um wilson where do you kind of see down the road the future of this game going and how involved you're going to be um how involved I'm going to be, I can't say, but um, the future of it, I mean, I can see from a sponsorship, a sponsorship standpoint, I can see how that's going to be major, you know, um, whether it's signs on the um, on the railways, whether it's, um, you know, um, sponsorships on a horse, you know, um, whatever it may be, or, you know, uh, like you said, promotion wise. Um, and also just the, you know, um, the sports betting side of it, you know, however that works, you know, um, then tapping into different markets like Asia, you know, um, and other markets that's not open right now. So I think, you know, you know, and once you get Asia involved in anything, just from the, <laughs> from the uh, so you know, many people, 
point. Well, there it sounds, it sounds like you might be the right liaison to bring us there. Well, yeah, Sam, that's, that's with true. your history in China, absolutely. Definitely, you know, just with the population um, and, you know, just the relationship we have with them and, you know, investing, you know, in um, a lot of U.S. companies. I well, think, they're huge into horse racing in particular also, right? Yeah. That, uh, yeah. You no, know, and just even for kids, though, it's just fun, you know. So, um, but like you said, yeah, um, horse racing is huge over there. And just, I think, I feel like betting, sports betting in general over there is huge. So, where, Des, where do you see the future of the betting standpoint coming in? We, you know, we've talked about it, we hear it in all the clubhouse chats and um, the discords and things like that. What are your thoughts on where things like that might land? Oh, I mean, absolutely. It's 100% headed that way. I, I can imagine that there are quite a few barriers um, to, to get that up and running and, and the legality and all the compliance stuff. But I mean, 100%, that's the way it's going. Um, how quickly they get there, you know, I think it's probably one of the things that they're prioritizing, but just will happen in parallel. There's a lot of other good stuff that they, you know, want to get going, like sponsorships, like we talked about, you know, big, big races. I mean, it's funny, the you know, purses for these races are relatively small to how much people are paying for these horses. Um, and I can see that being one of the things that, you know, changes the soonest is, you know, some sponsor comes in and goes, we're going to do a $20,000 purse for a class one race. That's going to turn heads. As soon as that, you know, that uh, headline on Yahoo Finance goes, someone won $20,000 on a digital horse race today, it's going to skyrocket. So, yeah, I think uh, that's going to be I, I definitely think that's the future, right? Like you're going to get bigger purses. Um, you know, we had Darren Ravel on. He said that he thought maybe someday you'd get a purse bigger than the Kentucky Derby. And I mean, that's pretty interesting. So I uh, hope you think uh, you think come at me is going to be running in the in the Kentucky Derby of Zed uh, Wilson. <laughs> It depends. It depends on the buy-in. The buy-in. <laughs> buy-in. I'm, I'm in there. Yeah, that's that. So, do you have? You know, did you spend time when you were racing? Come at me. Did you spend time kind of honing in on its preferred distance? Did you, you know, play that whole strategy game? What was your, what was your, you know, experience doing that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, when I first got him, you know, uh, Drew kind of gave me an update. He's good at fourteen hundred. He's decent at twelve hundred. You know, I haven't tried him at a thousand, but maybe he's good at that. And I think maybe sixteen hundred. So I kind of just like you know uh, did a few of each. Uh, sixteen hundred, not not good at all. Uh, fourteen <laughs> fourteen hundred is decent. Twelve hundred is really good. Was good, and I think his his a uh, hundred uh, or a thousand, whatever you call it, uh, is really good. That's his best. That so you got a sprinter there. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Uh, I. Uh, Go ahead. Those that uh that that twelve hundred, you know, uh to fourteen hundred, you know. Um uh, sometimes I race him at sixteen hundred, but he hasn't really did much at that. So I I feel like there's just been even from when you got this horse and when you uh got into the game, which is right around the same time we all did, mm -hmm. there's just been so many developments in all the tools that are out there to be able to analyze you know, your horse, right? Like it used to be, I was keeping a manual just a month ago. I was keeping a manual spreadsheet with all my odds and I was trying to do it that way. Now you have, I literally have, I think six different tool websites up that are, uh, favorited so I could kind of analyze my horses here. So, um, do you use any of those sec, uh, other sites to kind of check your, your stuff or, um, you, you, a chamber guy and just writing odds in a notebook? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I haven't used any of those sites. You know, uh, a couple of those sites hit me on uh, Twitter, you know, uh, kind of trying to get me to do some uh, analytic stuff with them. But I was like, nah, I, I just like, <laughs> for me, you know, um, you know, playing basketball for so long, I like the feel of everything, kind of like to do it on my oh, own. Oh, I like that. To, to learn, you know, uh, from a physical standpoint. So me just, you know, uh, learning the characteristics of my horse on my own is, you know, good enough for me. Like, that's how I kind of like... That's cool. So big question is, when are we going to see come at me on the uh, craft uh, Z run leaderboard that I post on Twitter? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that, Wilson, but I post a, a daily digest every day of like the top horses, Here, top times. Let me pull it up. I, I think Did I can, think that, but I think I've seen it once because it was like, uh, I thought I was on it, but it was like, come at me, bro. 
Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's true. Such a tease. <laughs> that's think, funny. Uh, I didn't know what it was. I think somebody retweeted it or whatever. And I seen that, so I did see it. Um, but yeah, it's I funny. Race, I haven't raced them in a man about a week and a half. You know, just oh, been, we gotta get a race going. <laughs> yeah, I just been ripping and running, so I haven't even got a chance to race them in a while. That's funny. So, uh, do you have plans now? You had a bunch that were in your your Griffin races. There are those going to be long term holds for you? Are you eventually going to run them? You know, as you get a, uh, or are you planning on just breeding them? Unraced. What's your strategy with those? Um, I thought about breeding them unraced and just holding on to them. Uh, but I think I'll race them at some point. I think for me, it's just like kind of having to go through that same thing, like learning what they're good at, like kind of putting them a little bit everywhere. I don't really want to go through that right now. <laughs> I kind of just want to race. Oh, <laughs> the race and win right now. So I just keep yeah. Yo, it's fun when you know what your horse is good at and you can race it and you start to see results. It's it's like, you know, that's the goal, right? The end goal of, of your horses, right? Uh, Des, what do you think about breeding your unraced horses? Do you think that's a, so, a good thing, bad thing? We're, we're a big fan of unfounded theories here, just yeah. wild speculation. And, you know, I personally would recommend, I have this weird theory that Zabos aren't really performing that well right now compared to how rare they are. I mean, they're almost just as rare as Nakamoto's and it just doesn't make sense. Um, so my theory is that Zabos were meant for something different. They were meant for either jump racing or the next evolution of racing. So they have like a little thing that's hidden that no one can see that's just going to explode as the, the racing explodes. So I don't know, maybe hold on to those, maybe keep those unraced, unbred. And when they pop off, you'll, you know, you'll, you know, end up with a, a nice come up there. But I do, I mean, I do, I'm a big fan of racing. Um, and I think you should race a lot of your horses. Uh, I think, you know, you said someone was offering you some horses. If those were Z8s to Z10s or even like Z5s to Z7s, like maybe snatch up a couple of those, feel good about racing them, see where they are. But it's funny, the value, if you just talk about it from a fun standpoint, obviously it's more fun to race. But if you talk about a value standpoint, if you get a winner, it's much more advantageous than just keeping it unraced and, and whatnot. And you've seen kind of winning horses sell for, you know, a lot more than unraced. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of subscribe to the theory of racing until the toes fall off, you know. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a good point. Um, shout out to our our friend Adam over at Zed Gazette too about the Zabos. He always uh, he's been telling me steeplechase for Zabos since I think like day two. I, I was talking to him about it, so um, you know he's been saying that for a while as well and beating it into my head. But I think your your point there about racing them versus unraced is a good one because I do think that even if it's not a good racer, it will eventually down the line be, if it's a Genesis horse, be good for something, right? Um, and I think if it's a Genesis horse, it might even, might be a breeder or there's a whole bunch of stuff that aren't knocked, uh, you know, unlocked in the racing algorithm yet that we might see it be good at. Um, Wilson, have you heard about, uh, you know, all the things that your horse could potentially be good at in the future, like these steeplechase races, the uh, gate preference, all these other weather things you might have to find out about your horse going yeah, forward. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you know, um, talking to Doofy, uh, he's mm. good at everything, you know, um, so he's like one of the uh, good people to talk to and just kind of watch from afar on Twitter. So, you know, uh, when I first got in, he was always talking about like the possibilities, you know, and that. You know, unlocking the algorithms and stuff like that saying so um it's always definitely something you know when you uh, when it's a racing game or some type of uh, athletic competition you know you can kind of like use analytics and uh, different uh sciences behind each horse and just have a like kind of an edge you know lots of lots of data coming out man and it's uh, it I feel like I'm data paralysis sometimes, though, too. I, I think I need to change uh, to a little more Wilson Chandler approach and just go by feel sometimes, you know? Uh, Chamber, I feel like that's how you race. But I'm the Charles Barkley of of racing. I don't go for analytics. Uh, you know, <laughs> analytics doesn't mean you're going to be a good teammate. Um, no, I can you do me a favor, too? Um, I, I was on I – was, I was creeping on that last clubhouse you guys were in the other day. Um, I don't know if I don't know if you were in it, uh, Des, but 
Bunch, you were definitely there. Can you let them know how to say Zabo? Because they were murdering that name. <laughs> just it's Everybody Zabo. Does. It's a yeah. it's a silent S. Just just forget the S. Um, but I, I was just like, oh my goodness, they I probably heard about five or six different versions on how to say that. Um uh, yes. But speak out. Um <laughs> Because I was about to lift my hand up in that clubhouse. We're like, hey, you got to be a you got to be a real crypto head to know that, though, right? <laughs> I, think, I feel like you have to. But um, yeah, I mean, are we going to be able to get into a, a race here? I've been, well, I've been trying. It's uh, I think the wait's a little longer. Yeah, wow, that stinks. I was yeah. hoping we we could have raced. What but. What are your thoughts? Like, I, I'm I'm more curious. Like, obviously, Wilson, you got a cup. You got uh, I think three or four that are unraced. Uh, do you think you'll be participating in the next drop? Uh, and yes, if you pick up some, you know, if you pick up some comparable ones, will you race those ones? Because that's kind of the way I was thinking. I wanted to get some, keep them unraced until I get into the next drop. And if I get more in that next drop, maybe I'll race my older ones. Yeah, definitely. That's always the thought, you know, for me. Um, but to answer your question, I will be in the next drop. You know, hopefully I get some uh, good horses. Uh, Don't yeah. get pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll hook you up again. <laughs> yeah, Chamber, Chamber will just drop you another horse and uh, we'll get you hooked up. But um, Whatever that I, day, feeling at home, I'm waiting on that drop, man. <laughs> yeah, we're not moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Like, it's, so when do we let's – let's do some more wild speculation here. When do you think we might see – Another drop, Des. You're, you got your uh, ear to the I, ground. I, I do feel like we're going to see something towards the end of this week. I have a feeling it actually might be breeding. You know, they just released a statement that said that they cleared. There was an issue with Matic and, and horses getting stuck, looking like they're in a race, but they're not. And they just basically fixed 99% of the issues today. So I feel like it's all ramping up. It's been two weeks since they had breeding turned on. It's been three or four weeks since the last drop. I feel like they're going to do something towards the end of this week. Wild speculation, but, you know, that's, that's what I mean. That's the only you speculation I like. <laughs> you heard it here first. All right, Chamber, I know you you had some you know basketball. It, you know I'm itching. I know. I know you have some basketball questions for Wilson. So I – I, I would be remiss if I didn't give you your time to ask Wilson. Some I appreciate basketball that questions. too because I could see you going back to Des a couple of times. I'm like, my man, Bunch I'll is wait, hooking I'm me waiting up. for the. He's hooking I'm me up to at wrap the end. up. Yeah, I'm waiting to wrap <laughs> up with your your basketball questions because I know that you're not going to ask you know intelligent dead questions. So. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Um, okay, I, I I guess the first one would be um, at any point in your career. Were you ever very close to being a Laker? No. <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. I for sure thought I for sure thought you were going to be on the cusp. Maybe a deal fell through on a trade or something. Damn. Okay. I'm not of Lakers uh, inquiring about me at all. So I, I was I was on the message boards making up all sorts of rumors. Wilson Chandler's <laughs> coming. You know, trade straight up for Lamar Odom. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I remember those days. I got a um, I got a question for him. Uh, if you, I know you're not into Top Shot, but if you had one moment in your career that you would have made into a Top Shot moment, what would it be? Oh man, that's a tough one. Um, that's a tough one. I would say just with everything that goes into it, uh, the garden, the fans, uh, the dunk. You know, uh, kind of like uh, when I see. Um, like people post old highlights is kind of always one of the ones that's always in there. And that, that'll be the uh, reverse dunk at the garden or uh, JaVale McGee. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's JaVale's, a fun one. JaVale's been on the wrong side of a lot of those uh, over the years. <laughs> no, he's been on the right side a lot, you know. Oh, yeah, man. I, I mean, that guy does – he doesn't He doesn't skip a chance to try, nah. and, block a, to try and block a shot. Um, Actually, smart as shit, man. He's one of the smartest players I've played with. He's on, Really? He's, you know, uh, you know, everybody's like, oh, Shaq and the fool, but he's he's actually intelligent and shit. I mean, I was – I think I watched every single every single one of his um, – I don't know if you watched, like, his YouTube bubble videos nah, last year. I, oh, he's They hilarious. were fantastic. They were, like, I watch it every day. Um, I thought they were really, really good. But you could tell – you can tell he's super smart. Um, I got a question. I think I know the answer, um, but I want to get your opinion. Playing in China – what what NBA what player that's played in the NBA 
that's gone over to China has had is like the most legendary player like over the course of say the last I think I know ever right <laughs> right <laughs> I mean you got to say in the last 20 years we'll say yeah Steph on Marbury he's Steph on Marbury say, right yeah it's got to be Starbury. Yeah, Starbury. Starbury. <laughs> okay <laughs> It it's was crazy. It was crazy, right? Like how, like with Jordan and LeBron and Kobe, it's like over there. It's like who's the best? Steph on my way. Like, isn't like hands down. No doubt. That's yeah. awesome. That's fantastic. Isn't that uh, weird? <laughs> what? Georgia Tech grad. Georgia Tech grad. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I guess growing up, who was your who was your favorite? Like who was your guy? Uh, who was the guy that you modeled after? I, I never modeled after anybody. Uh, <laughs> no. I would. I would like to. I would like. Though, think I did, but no, uh, you know, all my favorite players were like super skilled players. Like, I played nothing uh, like them. Uh, Kobe was like my so I grew up with my grandparents, and my grandmother, uh, like, she was Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan, everything, right? Because you weren't too far from Chicago, right? Yeah, hour and a half drive. So, we got yeah. W, we got WGN, which, which was the oh, local yeah. Chicago station at the time, they showed all the Bulls games, and um, every every game, like, she never missed a game, like. Really? No, it was always Michael Jordan in the house. But like when Kobe came, it was like I was older. I was like junior high, you know, um, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, you know, and then on. Um, so he was like the guy that you know we grew up watching, you know, uh, and kind of be our Michael Jordan at that time. So yeah. I was, you know, those two from those uh, standpoints, and then it was a lot of guys I loved. Kevin Garnett was one of my favorite players. Um, Jamal Mashburn was one of my favorite players. Penny Hardaway. Um, Allen Iverson, of course, you know, just Allen Iverson, of course, yeah, yeah Allen Iverson kind of just like transcended the game. Like, if you got tattoos, um, in our generation, it was because of you know, Allen Iverson. I swear, he started like the, the sleeve, the finger. I mean, he 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 really did. He was kind of a pioneer in a lot of that stuff. And you know, anyone I who wasn't emulating, you know, Kobe on the court, they were emulating Iverson at that time. I was a huge basketball player growing up, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, so I. Dreamed, dreamed of where getting where you were, so that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely. Um, but you know, everything is, you know, a little easier than we think. You know, uh, I couldn't do what you guys do. You know what I mean, just like <laughs> what? now he's being super. I mean, humble. Look, okay, uh, I'm pretty, podcasting I'm, is a sport. <laughs> I'm pretty sure <laughs> around, just eat stuff and that's gain from this amount of weight. It's not that I, difficult. My face, I sweat like almost pass out on stage. I hate, I hate, I hate <laughs> I'm no lie. That's awesome. Well, when they when they make the professional podcasting association, uh, we will will hopefully be at least Max in the contract. G, at Max least in the contract. G League, we'll we'll be in the G League at least. <laughs> but uh, Chamber, you you definitely have some more. I know you do. I do have one, but I feel like Wilson won't answer it, and Don't it's a it. very Don't very reasonably. You know, I understand yeah. why you. Would. Come on, we did were you, just talking about it. Did you have uh, – oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'll bring up – there's two things I want to bring up. First thing I wanted to bring up was did you have, a like, a worst teammate of all time? Can nah, we talk about that? Nah, was there I, anybody that, that, that kind of sticks out to you? No, nah, if, I, if I did, I would say it, but I literally never had a like, – Everybody was pretty good overall? Yeah, like, I never had nothing with uh, none of my teammates. I've seen a lot of teammates argue and don't like each other. Um, right. They love each other, so I, I never – how about your favorite guy to play with? Man, I don't think I have one. Like, you know, I don't have one. I have a list of guys. Uh, Nate That's Rob, awesome. Q. Cool, cool. I mean, that, that whole first Knicks team we had, Malik Rose, Eddie Curry, and all those guys, like that whole team was dope. I want to be around. Um, Q seemed like a good guy. Like Quentin Richardson? I'm, yeah. Like, that, he seemed like a good dude. Yeah, great guy. Zach Randolph, great guy. Um, uh, Darrell Arthur, you know, uh, Will Barton, uh, so many people. Jameer Nelson, I talk to Jameer all the time. Like, really? I talk to him the most. Um, Al Harrington, hmm. J.R. Uh, Smith. Like, I had a lot of great teammates. You know, I, I liked all my teammates for the, for the most. That's awesome. I can so, see, I can see a, uh, I can see a locker room of NBA players just betting on Zed horses. Like, I totally can see. That. <laughs> Generation right now, I can definitely see that too. Like, like once they get into it, I can see like that happening. Like even on the playing, I can see like guys. Connecting. Yeah, for so, sure. So I gotta ask. Um, I'm, I'm a I'm a huge Kobe Bryant fan. 
my three my three favorite Kobe games um, are God. in order. He's so nice to us. Chandler. I know. He's so I was nice asked. to us. Jesus. I gotta ask. Go what ahead. was it like? What was it like? You know. Yeah. yeah. The sixty-one <laughs> at the Garden. I remember watching it, losing my mind. Uh, uh, it's my third favorite Kobe game of all time. Yeah. How was it? <laughs> it was probably the most unbelievable thing I ever like saw, like with my own. Life. Right. Yeah. Like I, I, I agree. Like, like from a competitive standpoint, at the time, like definitely was mad, embarrassed, like all type of like feelings. But like as I like watch, like as I get older, like. Like I forgot about that a long time ago. Like, I was watching; it was unbelievable, bro. Like, I don't and care. it's not, the, and it's not the same way. Like I feel like Jalen Rose gets dog for the eighty-one point game. Like there was, the, you ever see like the commercial where yeah. Kobe's at the restaurant and he's like, "How many olives?" He looks at Jalen, looks back at the waiter, he's like eighty-one. <laughs> 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 at least you didn't get a commercial. But I would say that's my that's my number three game. Uh, my number two is eighty-one. Uh, yeah. But my my favorite game, my favorite Kobe game is his last game. I thought that was to me the craziest Kobe game of all time was his last yeah, one. It has to be. It's like picture perfect. It's like a movie almost. Like I'm retiring, you know, at the Achilles injury, the last game of my career. I scored sixty in LA. Like, you know, in, with uh, everybody on the side. Everybody was there. Everybody was there. Because uh, I remember, uh, I remember, um, I remember that because I don't think we were playing, but that wasn't that wasn't scheduled to be a TV game. No, you're right. And it was like the Warriors, like they was playing somebody. I think that was like that the big... was, I think that was the Lakers' seventeenth win of the season. Yeah, like that was the last game of the season. It was their seventeenth win. Yeah, and I think it was... the... somebody else was like the main game of the night. So I remember. I think that. there was. I think there was like a Golden State game that night. Yeah, and I think I remember like after like the game was over. That's all everybody was talking about, like Kobe everywhere. Like it was. Sick. I was to me that yeah. was nuts. I I was I was losing my mind. I remember just yelling and screaming at the top of my lungs. In the basement, I live. I live on the East Coast, so it's like one in the morning. Yeah. Waking up my kids, I'm yelling, <laughs> <laughs> like, "What's wrong, Dad?" <laughs> perfect end into the perfect movie, though. For and Mamba out at the end, you know, and drops the mic. Mamba yeah. out. Okay. I uh, uh, I saw a clip yesterday, I think, that of him shooting the two free throws with the uh, with the torn Achilles, and I was just like. No, I like how could anybody ever do that? <laughs> it's insane. And he like makes it look like it's nothing, but uh, that's got me emotional right now. Jeez. Yeah, I know. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell you you got you I think you're tearing up under there. I don't know. Don't restart it. <laughs> I made a whole there's a bunch of and I have a, another show and after his passing, I think I think you let me rant for like 20 minutes. There's a 20 minute oh, yeah. eulogy. Yeah, on yeah. our other show, just Kobe. Uh, yeah. has nothing. To, we have a crypto show, just like a straight crypto show. And it, there was t- like 20, 25 minutes of me just ranting on Kobe, uh, giving the proper eulogy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh, I was I was interested to get. Obviously, you had a, a bird's eye view of 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 that game. No, um, no, it was a dope experience. Uh, just happened to be on the wrong side of that. <laughs> Sorry, did you get the like? I'm trying to think. Did you get like the bulk of it, or yeah, yeah I did. Think I got all like the the spectacular ones. Like I was the guy now, you know, <laughs> at the end of the game. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> if I didn't get the whole thing, like, just from highlights and just you know uh, watching ESPN those times, like, he definitely got all of that. Because you're like the top defender on literally every team you've been on. Yeah. So that doesn't shock me that you got to uh, you have to try to lock him up. <laughs> no, yeah, That's definitely. Uh, I mean, I've been a part of a lot of. Uh, High scoring uh, individual games, you know, LeBron, KD, like you guard so many great players. Like sometimes, like your only defense is like the hope they miss, you know, you play your heart. <laughs> like they so good, you know, it's kind of like they make, like, I think people forget how good NBA players are, like one through whatever, oh. whatever it is. But like certain guys are so good, they make like a great player look average, you know, just. Right. You know. Well, I was watching, uh, there was like a YouTube clip that came out the other day of um, what's his name? Uh, White Mamba, uh, from Bo- uh, he's uh, what's his name? I can't think now. Um, Scalabrini, yeah. Scalabrini, thank you. And Scal was in the gym, like just like a Y gym, and he lit somebody up. Oh, I saw that, and he yeah. looked like me. Like, oh, Scalabrini I did see that. looked yeah. like he was about 30 pounds overweight and just lit him up. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> I, I think that's also great. Like uh, fans being able to associate with somebody, so associate themselves with somebody that kind of looks like them. I think that's why, like, I mean, 
don't get me wrong, yeah. Steph Curry is amazing. Like, he's one of the best players of all time. But I think people look at him like he's not super tall. He's not super right. high. Not, right. He doesn't, doesn't have a lot of uh, muscles. He's skinny. You know, he's not that. Man, he's jacked see, up now, though. He's jacked up. I'll take his muscle. I was going to say, you see him in college at Davidson? He's like a string bean, man. He's tiny. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's dope. Like, somebody that good, like, people can, like, associate themselves with physically. Like, you know, I think that's why, you know, people, like, love his game. Yeah, totally. So who uh, do you got? Who do you got for the – who do you got this year? Who's winning it? I, I got to – I need your feedback. Is is it Brooklyn? Is Laker? Brooklyn, man, look, like – I know. They, I know. They had full strength for a long time in a long time. I think what maybe like a few weeks, maybe mm -hmm. they, all those guys playing at the same time. How about the Knicks? Nine in a row, baby. <laughs> yeah, hey, Nick, it's definitely great for the city, but it's like you know, it's a different level. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we can dream over here. Uh, I, the Knicks, you know, it is what it is. But um, the Nets playoff series, I think that'll be super oh competitive. I think that'll go oh, second. Just off a next and that's Lakers. No, no, Nets and uh, no, if Nets Knicks. Oh, Nets Knicks. Nets Knicks would be nuts. Yeah, yeah that would be fun. Be yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. So uh, I'm obviously I'm obviously uh, hedging my bets towards the Lakers. I think Drummond with AD once LeBron gets back. Nope, you're, you're, it's unstoppable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when LeBron is involved, you can never count him out. So. That guy's cr that guy's crazy. It like is. I was, I wouldn't say I was a LeBron hater. But I didn't. I I, I appreciated LeBron maybe going? halfway halfway through Miami. I would say, like, and then obviously second the second stint in Cleveland was insane. And are then he became about, a and then he became a Laker. I got I got to love him now. Obviously. Are you sure you was a uh, not a LeBron hater before the Lakers? You love him. <laughs> he definitely was. I wouldn't yeah, say I don't a know hater. What he was lying about that. I wouldn't <laughs> say a hater because I I wouldn't say I hate on anybody. I totally like you know like there's some people that like irrationally hate on LeBron. Yeah. So before like, he came, you you was a. Oh, got another call. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before he came, what? Man, I just have to say I love the dedication. Just denying calls for us. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna put perfect. that as my fun fact. That's great defense right there. <laughs> yeah, look at that! Look at those hands. <laughs> so, so, what were you saying before? Before he came, was he what? Oh, you're on mute. Oh, we lost you. There you go. There? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was gonna ask me about. He was. He basically he was, said you he, are. He was going to come at me with an introspective question, and I was really going to have to dig deep into my soul to answer it. I would say you're a Jordan hater, quite honestly. Well, I oh, yes, I'm a Jordan hater. I would no, say just, you're a Jordan just, hater. Just curious, Chamber, because like Kobe epitomizes Lakers for you, and there was kind of that rivalry, non-rivalry there. Like when he, when LeBron said he was coming over, my first reaction was not hell yeah. It was kind of like ah, oh, that doesn't feel right. Um, did you have the same thing? Um, I would say, yes, it took me a full season to like accept LeBron as a Laker. Yeah, that's fair. W Wilson, you back. Wilson's back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to know what the question was before LeBron came to the Lakers. What was your question? Yeah. Magic over LeBron before he came to the Lakers. No, I love Matt. So kind of like you, actually, my grandma is kind of the one that got me into watching the Lakers because she loved Magic Johnson. Um, and by the time I started, I was like a little kid. And by the time I really started watching it, like, unfortunately, Magic uh, had to retire. Uh, and then there was a whole other conversation that I had to have at a young age. That I was just like, hmm, what's going on here? <laughs> but uh, no, I always had LeBron. I would say by like 2012, I had LeBron in like a top five conversation, top 10 all time. Wilson, he's a Jordan hater. You but I do, hate, I do hate, I do hate Jordan. Uh, who, hates, who hates Jordan? <laughs> he does because he's a Kobe. He's a Kobe guy. <laughs> this guy. Um, I don't hate Jordan for what he like. He's obviously one of the greatest players of all time. But when I first started, you know, like in the Lakers, it was like '91. I was like I said, I was a kid. It was Jordan kicked out the the Lakers in in that or in the in the finals that year or nine ninety ninety one whatever it was. But whatever the year that was, it was just like nope. I don't like this guy. This guy's no good. 
Uh, and then we had bad, we had bad Lake. Well, not bad Laker teams, but yeah. not not Chicago Bull level teams for a yeah. while. Uh, definitely. But no, no, j- j- yeah, LeBron over Magic for sure. But Magic still, obviously, Magic. Still who's Magic. the Who's the best player of all time? LeBron James, I think. Like honestly, like there's nobody that's done it. In my opinion, like I'd love to get your feedback. My opinion, there's no one that's done it consistently for this long, with so much pressure coming out of the gates at like 18 years old, like even before that. But like makes like wins where he, like wherever he goes, he wins. Like he took that, like that, like that Cleveland team he took to the finals that first time. With like Eric Snow and like Decent big, and big Z, like I mean that's crazy. That's he was twenty years old or however he was at the time. So you like, said that's good at all. Like nobody on the team was good. <laughs> <laughs> if you put Kobe on that team, he wasn't getting to the finals. Put it that way. He wasn't getting to the finals with Kobe on that team. If you replace all right, well, Wilson, who's who do you think is the best of all time? Is it jo- it's Jordan? Man, it's hard to say. I think. I, I, to be honest, I'm one of those guys. I don't think it's a bad answer because, like, people grew up with certain people. Like, for me, it was That's Kobe. true. Like, for some people, it was Jordan. But it's a lot of people who say Kareem or Wilt, like, who've seen those guys, you know. Um, so. I, I, I always think it's always going to be better. So, like, in 15, 20 years from now, there'll be somebody better than LeBron. Because regardless of the sport, I think as a sport continues to grow – you're always learning from the from the players or the athletes that came before you, right? Yeah. So without Michael Jordan, you couldn't have Kobe. Without Magic Johnson, you wouldn't have LeBron. Um, and so somebody's going to be patterning their game after LeBron, and it's going to be seven feet tall with guard <laughs> skills and like a monster. Kevin Durant. Yeah, like Kevin Durant's maybe a little, but like <laughs> yeah, a heavier, like fifty pounds heavier. I got you. Durant. I got you. Don't be a time um, before we see another one of those guys. That, I I agree. I like. But again, you know, the game evolves too, right? Like if you, and, and I think it is to your point, Wilson, it's all about who you grew up watching, right? Yeah. Like, and because, because we weren't a pre, like we didn't appreciate Wilt and Kareem because we didn't see them as much, right? Like, or ever really. So um, I think that has a lot to do with it for sure. I bet you my dad would probably say something different, right? Like he would, he would give me a different answer. So um uh-huh. Look at is the is the competition. Who are they competing against? And I think that has. I mean, you look at Wilt. Wilt was going up against like part time plumbers. I think at some points. We 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 need uh we need Zed Run style odds before uh before these games so we can know exactly what the fitness level is of the other players, right? That's true. That's the point. <laughs> but I I think that's a good place to wrap up. Unless Des, you have any other questions for? No, nah, this has been a pleasure. No, nah, this has been a pleasure. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know Chambers in Candyland over there. So he could have gone my day, for another hour and a half. <laughs> yes, thank you so much for coming on. We really do appreciate it. And uh, so where can people find you and where can people find your project um, if they want to check that out as well? Uh, CryptoKickers.com, of course. Um, that's the site. And then they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, uh, CryptoKickers, um, OpenSea as well. Um and then, you know, I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's my name, Twitter, and the uh, same thing on Instagram. Perfect. That's we'll have those awesome. links. We'll have those links in the show notes. So anybody listening or watching, you'll be able to find those there. Yep, absolutely. And um, so that's going to do it for us. We, again, really appreciate you coming on. It's been a pleasure to chat horses and, and basketball with you. And I'm I'm glad that uh, this is – you've made Chambers life, really. That's. that's I'm going to be going up to my wife after this. I'm hanging up. And then for the next hour and a half to two hours, I'm just going to be talking about this conversation. <laughs> so and, now, and now you're going to, and so he's going to send you a bill and that's going to be a, a horse from next drop. And that you're going to have to, <laughs> it's fair. First time. That's, that's, that's more than perfect. Fair. But that is going to do it for us until next time. Stay mint.